I would like to apologize to the children that we didn't tell you in advance that at least for the first part of April until the second Sunday after Easter, which is April 23, you will be staying with the congregation because we will be entering into what we call Holy Week and we want you to participate because it's like the story unfolding, yeah? the story of our Lord Jesus unfolding. So it will be good for, for you to sit with us uh, during that uh, period of Holy Week and then Easter Sunday. And then your Sunday school will resume on April 23. Okay? Uh, today we have a very wonderful gospel where Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live. And, and everyone who believes, who lives and believes in me, will never die. Then he asked this question to Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe this? It is a question that I guess and I believe that our Lord is asking us also today. Do you believe in eternal life? In our prayer it says, we pray today that we may, Lord, help us to desire what you promise. And among the swift and varied changes of the world, may our hearts be surely fixed where true joys are to be found. Do you believe that there is life after this life? Do you understand the question of Jesus to, to, uh, to Martha? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Or do you believe that after, that the end of your life is the grave? Is that what you believe in? Do you believe in life after this life? You see, uh, a lot of people who experience near death experiences or like they died for a while, you know, they're experiencing this great, this white light at the end of the tunnel. And of course, uh, skeptics always question that and they say, well, maybe the oxygen is, you know, and they have an explanation and the brain is happening and all that. And, you know, the only thing that finally convinced me was when my mother-in-law died in 1996. You see, my mother died in 1985, which means uh, my mother never met the mother of Sister Cherry. They never met, ever. But in 1996, when, when my mother-in-law died and she was dying of cancer in the hospital, Cherry's brother gave us a phone call. He said, something really strange happened. And I said, what, what happened? He said, my mother experienced uh, uh, someone, that someone visited her, her at the hospital today. And we were asking, who visited you? The mother of Don and his grandfather. And I said, how can that be? Right? My mother died 11 years before that day. And my grandfather died in 19, let me see, 81? Uh, no, 1970. 79. So at the end of the day, I said, well, isn't that amazing that uh, there were already those who were going to greet her on the other side? Many such experiences uh, are recorded and people uh, have experienced something like this. The question is, do you believe in what Jesus is saying? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Okay. 
Do you believe in life after this life? Do you believe in eternity? How many of you believe in life after this life? Can you raise your hands? Put your hands down. If you believe in eternity, then the life that you live on earth should show that. You have to live your life with a view for eternity. Because a lot of people live very short-sighted lives. A lot of our, you know, our Kababayan only live for now in the present. You know? So they don't care if they step on another person, even if it's a brother or a sister, you know, as long as they get what they want before they die. For them, they see that the end is the grave. I believe that happiness is temporary, but joy is eternal. Which means when we prayed a while ago and he said, Lord, may our hearts be fixed where true joys are to be found. It means that if you believe in, in eternity, then your mind has to be set on certain things. If you have a pad of paper, pad, uh, some notes, uh, write one, two, three, four, five. Okay. If you believe in eternity, there are five things that we should see or should be seen in your life. First of all, if you believe that life does not end here on earth and that there is life after this life, then you have to set your mind on God. First, number one. Okay. Because He is eternal. Delight yourself in the Lord, it says, and He will give you the desires of your heart. But a lot of people, they focus so much on the desires that they're asking God. For them, the gifts are more important than the giver. Imagine uh, Fatima going like this and saying, Ooh, wow, nice, nice, really. And then Miggy comes and says, and then, <laughs> Get away. Oh, Get away. I don't want to see your face. Imagine people so engrossed with the gifts. They don't really care about the giver. Well, that's the way we treat God, you see. We have to set our mind on God. It says in Colossians 3, Since you have been raised with Christ, set your mind on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Psalm 130, our responsorial psalm, is a beautiful psalm. It says, Out of the depths I cry out to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfading love. You know, when you're waiting for someone, if he or she is really not that special, we sometimes say, well, I'm leaving. But if that someone is special, you wait for them. No matter what happens, you're going to wait for them. How excited are you to talk to God every day? Are you as excited as you know, when uh, someone you have a crush on gives you a ring or texts you? How excited are you? Number one, set your mind on God. Number two, if you believe that there is life after this life, then you have to set eternal goals. Goals that are for eternity. 
not temporal goals. Have long-term goals that will outlive you, that will outlive your mortal body. If you live on earth only for temporal goals, guess what? All your labor and all your aspirations and all your acquisitions will turn to dust. And what's the use? Life is so short. Don't waste your life on temporal joys or trophies and crowns that, you know, some people, yeah, it's, it's not wrong. I, I, I admire those who go for the Olympics and they have eight gold medals, you know. And, you know, there was a time when, when I lived uh, in a day where there was really great tennis players, you know. There was Borg, Connors, and McEnroe. And what shocked me when I found out that, you know, was Borg was selling uh, some of the trophies, some of the things that he had, some of the memorabilia he had. And yet when he was playing, he, he was so perfect, you yeah. know. It was like a machine, you know, just going back, 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 you know. And, and at the end of the day, you ask a kid now, you know, do you know Bjorn Borg? Who? I remember John Lennon, he said, Ah, uh, well, you know, the Beatles are more famous than Jesus. Yes. And you ask that kid now, Sa Sam, do you know the Beatles? Uh, the Lady Bob? But what about the Beatles, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know the Beatles. When in our, in our day, during the time of Deacon Resty, the Beatles was done. You know? Everyone had the jingle extra hot and playing the Beatles songs. Nowadays, you understand what I'm saying? A lot of the goals that people are fighting for, even today, are not worth fighting for. Sex, young people. Sex is a beautiful gift that comes from God. But you know what? Sex is not everything. Sex is not eternal. And yet, right now, there's this great animosity between Hollywood and, you know, LGBT fight, you know, the right to have sex the way you want. Even if it goes against nature or against how God ordained it. The truth is, the battle that a lot of people are fighting are not worth winning because it is temporal. You see these, uh, these uh, sisters here? Uh, Wonderful sisters, Sister Gloria, Sister Lea, Father Irwin. The celibacy of priests and nuns are a proof that there are eternal joys that are greater than sex itself. Sex is overrated in our generation. There's nothing wrong with it. It's something beautiful, but you see, in our generation, it has become an obsession. That hedonism or pursuit of pleasure has become God. Nowadays, you talk, you talk about purity, chastity, faithfulness, loyalty, devotion, and people laugh at you. But guess what? These are the things purity, chastity, faithfulness, love, loyalty, devotion, these are the things that are eternal. And having your body as a temple of the living God is a goal, it is a goal that is eternal. To have the Holy Spirit residing inside you, making his temple inside you, that is a great goal. In fact, that should be the goal of every one of us as Christians. First and foremost, that's why in our, in our in Romans 8, in our reading today, it says, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The first goal that we should have that is eternal should be that our body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. When our body is okay, 
Now we can have a second goal. You know what? When you play football yesterday, my favorite team scored three goals. You cannot go to the third goal unless you do the first goal first, right? So the first goal is make sure that your soul is right with God. The Holy Spirit is residing in you. The second goal then, which is worth having as an eternal goal, is make sure that those you love also end up in heaven one day. Introduce not a religion. We don't need a new religion in the world. You introduce your relationship with Jesus to them. If your loved ones, if your children and your brothers and sisters get to know Jesus in a personal way, eternal life is knowing God. Then that should be your second goal. Sometimes, you know, we, we lose our jobs and we say, Oh no, I won't be able to send money anymore to the Philippines. Well, sometimes what they, what they need is not your money. What they need is God in their life. Because the more you send money, they, they spend it so quickly. But if they have God, then God will supply all their needs. Sometimes we, our priorities, we try to do things in the place of God. Your loved ones knowing God and having a personal relationship with Him, the salvation of the souls of your loved ones is a goal worth living for. After the second goal, you, you ensure that your soul is right with God, those around you, your children, everything, have a relationship with God, everyone around you. The third goal, perhaps, would be to be a part of a church that is flowing with what the Holy Spirit is doing in their generation. I like our first reading today in the book of Ezekiel where it talks about the resurrection of that great army. A lot of people nowadays, they say, well, I don't want to go to church. And they say, why? Because church is history. Church is passé. It's finished already. Church is dead. In some ways, in some areas, you could agree with them. But the, the, re the reading today in Ezekiel is a prophetic reading showing us that just as Jesus was resurrected, one of these days the church will be resurrected again. The army of the Lord will be resurrected. The liturgy is there, the bones in place, the evangelical part, the flesh is there, and then God is going to breathe His Holy Spirit into it, the charismatic part. So the third goal is to be a part of the revival or the resurrection of the church. I believe that Filipinos were sent here to Europe just like the Europeans went to the Philippines 500 years ago. The Europeans went there to bring Christianity to us. We are back here in Europe to revive the faith of the Europeans. You are not here primarily just to send money to the Philippines. You are here to help your employers remember God. A lot of them are in depression. They're taking a lot of pills. They're taking, their, their marriages are falling apart. Why? Because in spite of all the riches that they have, if you take God out, that is the end of everything. So you are here to fan the flame, to breathe life okay, into the dead bones, into the sinews, and cause a great army to come to life. So, three goals, ourselves, the people around us, and to be part of a church that God is going to use to bring revival to the land. The third thing, so I said, number one, set your mind on God. Two, have eternal goals. Three, use your time wisely. Because it's useless having a goal 
and not to use your time wisely for that goal. Now, I don't want to be philosophical about this, but you know, all of us, including Father Irwin, although Father Irwin was enjoying himself uh, dancing last night, you know, I really, he said, oh, it's like he didn't have an operation. All of us, brothers and sisters, you know, you go to the grocery and you buy some, a milk, and in the milk there's a use by date. There's a date there that says, you have to use this milk by this date. Because after this date, you cannot use it anymore. It expires. An expiration date. Guess what? You and I, all of us, have an expiration date. Have you ever looked in the mirror and said, oh, I didn't have, you know, like maybe Imelda was saying, Wala, ito mga kulbot na to, wala ito no araw. This hair used to be all one color now, there's all color now. What's happening? You know, my body used to be so sexy, now it's a different shape now. What's happening? Well, brothers and sisters, you have to, you have, we have, all have to admit the fact that we're all getting older. And we are closer, sorry to say this, to our expiry date than ever. <laughs> everyone, everyone will go through that. Zacchaeus in our gospel today was resurrected. But guess what? After a few years, Zacchaeus died. I mean Lazarus, sorry, Lazarus. As the story today is about Lazarus. Lazarus was resurrected, but after a few years, Lazarus died. So what does that tell you? It tells you that God can extend your life for a certain period of time to fulfill a mission and purpose. But all of us will go through that. You know, last night my, my daughter was saying, kind of was looking at all the young people and said, uh, Tita Mel, I feel so old. <laughs> And I wanted to say, you should. <laughs> you know what? Young people these days, or young adults, they plan so much. Planning is good. But don't spend your whole life planning. <laughs> Learn to go forward and walk with an element of faith. That's why when Miguel said, I'm going to get married. Sure, sir. Go ahead, take a step of faith. Why? Why would I be a hindrance to it? We plan too much, we don't end up doing anything. Stick to your eternal goals, don't be diverted, and use your time wisely. St. Paul had to say this, he said in Ephesians 5 verse 16, make the best use of your time because the days are evil. Consider how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of your time. Do not be foolish and understand what the will of God is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. You know, coming home last night, you know, in, in the metros, my goodness, there's so many people on a Saturday night who are just drunk and out of, you know, they're not, you know. Woo! And it's sad because some live like that every day. The fourth thing, okay, use your time wisely. Number four, you have to put all your effort into it. Give it all you've got. Give it all. Do your best. And don't be ningas kugon. In the Philippines, we have this saying, ningas kugon. The school going, but it, it, it lights very quickly. Some people are, are hot very quickly, and then, but they don't finish what they started. Eleven years ago, Bishop Elmer had this wonderful vision. He said, uh, for my 10th year anniversary as a bishop, he said, I'm going to invite uh, an orchestra to play in front of our children. So we paid 1,000 euros for an orchestra to play in front of us at the 10th anniversary. 
and Nidhi and all the little ones, they were all around this uh, group of uh, quartet who were playing uh, instruments and violin, cello and all that. And, and you know, they were looking and they were saying, and their mouths were open looking at this wonderful four, seat, uh, four, four uh, musicians playing. And now, 11 years after, can you imagine? Through all the conservatory lessons, you know, sulit din pala lahat yung mga binabayad natin. But sometimes you feel like, oh, what a waste, Lord, pay, 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 conservatory, all that, you know. But uh, if it weren't for people, for parents, you know, like uh, Sani and Christina, who invested into uh, Abby learning to play, then we wouldn't be where we are right now. So put all your effort into it, and what you start, you finish. Don't lose sight of your eternal vision and your goals. Number five, now this is, this is probably also as equally important as everything that I shared a while ago. Don't lose your joy in striving for a goal. Joy is eternal. Don't lose your joy. St. Paul gives a warning to parents. In Ephesians 6 verse 4 and Colossians 3 verse 21. Two verses. One to the Ephesians and one to the Colossians. Ephesians 6 verse 4. Fathers, it says, do not exasperate your children. Or... Cause them to be angry with you. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Colossians 3, verse 21. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. You see, one thing that you can say is different with our youth and the other youth, and I'm sure you will agree with me, one thing is obvious. Our youth have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is their strength. But if you start saying, No, sinabi ko na sa'yo, kaya ako mag-serve. Sam, well, ano ka na naman, late ka na naman. Hey, kaya ako pumunta ka doon na mag-serve. Hindi ka mag-serve. The moment you do that, patay kang bata ka. When Samuel becomes 18, he will say, well, now I just can't wait to become 18, but I can be free, free, free from serving God. Don't get me wrong, discipline is important. Discipline is vital. But joy is equally vital. Let them do it with joy. That's what the scripture says. Let them be filled with joy. It, there was a time in Matthew's life, uh, which was about a couple of years ago, that he wanted to quit. I don't want to play the trumpet anymore. And I had to have this bargain with him. I said, Matt, one more year. If you can play beautifully already in the church after one year, then you can quit. So I said, okay, one more year in conservatory. And then he joined this jazz, jazz uh, conservatory class. And, and later on, it's like, see, he was just enjoying himself. And now he's enjoying himself playing. You know, it's like, it's different when someone plays because they're being forced by their parents. And it's different when they're enjoying what they're doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, what is important, now it's not just talking about the fathers here, but also the mothers, because the mothers also can embitter their children. Okay. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Paulit-ulit si ano eh, si same Paul dito. In another translation, which is beautiful, it says, Always be, be full of joy. Always be full of joy in the Lord. 
At the end of the day, these five things that I've set eternal goals, use your time wisely, put all your effort into it, and don't lose your joy in doing it. At the end of the day, what God is saying to us is if you believe, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe in life after life? Do you believe in life after death? Do you believe in eternal life? If you believe, don't just live for temporal things. Live for eternity. C.S. Lewis said, our life on earth is like a drop in a bucket. A drop in a bucket. In, my, in other words, the bucket is eternity and your life on earth is just a drop. That's how short life is. When we reach our use by date, we can already see beyond. You know, last night we were watching, you know, Sister Cherry and I, and, and uh, Floor were at the same table, and oh, Sherry was saying, why didn't I die? We can die already. We can, I mean, we can retire now. You know? Well, not yet, not quite. Okay. Uh, young children, uh, young children, uh, mimers, okay? do you want uh, Tita Rose to stop? No. Okay. Do you want Tita Rose to stop? Huh? You want Tita Rose to stop? No, no one wants Tita Rose to stop. Yeah? So it's not the time for Floor, Rose, and Chet to go. But what God is trying to show us, I think, I believe, is that we are on the right track. Okay? What God is trying to show us is that we are well on our way. Okay? We are doing what is right. Don't live for today. Live with a vision for eternity. And you tell the person sitting next to you, live for eternity. Live for eternity. Amen. Please stand.